There are so many voices in this country that are speaking up and active, people active in their communities, that I'm not talking about a fringe minority or a silent majority, but the silenced majority, silenced by the mainstream media. The media today represents a minority elite. These all have to be challenged, and many people are doing it. It's Michael Franti here. This is Amy Goodman with Rochester. Rochester Indie Media. You're watching Indie TV. I'm Dawn, the Barefoot host, and we have our great guests. Another show here today. They didn't come back, but we did these takes back to back, and we're going to now talk about critical resistance and the prison abolition movement and some of the grassroots groups that are working on this project and what it's all about. We're going to find out today, and hopefully Rochester will become an allied group, and we too will have some way to support this kind of work, because that is a goal of ours. So thank you, Helia, and thank you, Jonathan, for enlightening us on this topic today and let's just start with critical resistance what is critical resistance and the word abolition you know how do you mm -hmm. what is that okay so critical resistance is a national grassroots organization that is um, focusing on the uh, hypocrisy of um, prisons and their uh, attempt to keep our, our provide safety and security for commu uh, communities right so um, and it's really pointing out um, how um, uh, the system of controlling and caging people is not helping to build secure and safe communities. It's actually destroying our communities. Um, and that uh, if we want to talk about real safety and harm reduction, we need to talk about eliminating poverty. We need to talk about meeting people's basic needs um, and diverting a lot of uh, resources towards health care and education and away from prisons, which actually undermine the health of our communities. So. Um, that's uh, that's what uh, that's what the work is. And the term prison industrial complex it becomes a buzzword. You know, some right. people know what you what we mean when we say that. What is the prison industrial complex? A prison industrial complex is um, the overarching um, mechanism that includes uh, our judicial system. It includes uh, cr crimes, um, policies around what crime is, what is not a crime, um, and uh, jails, prisons, policing, surveillance, um, IMF, or what is it, um, ICE, uh, uh, INS, yeah. which is now ICE, um, of immigration control and um, the overarching mechanisms that are used to control society um, to keep us in line and, and um, yeah so and, and it's also talking about how um, there's an industry behind this right so uh, there are uh, the government and corporations and unions certain one of them certain unions at least are profiting from this overarching um, mechanism um, and um, it's kind of like uh, the military industrial complex um, it's not just about jails it's not just about prisons but it can also be around schools you know and how schools serve to funnel people into prisons um, and that if we are actually going to um, uh, ab abolish or dismantle this um, system we need to talk about it at you know in its whole as a, as the complex system that it is not just like focus on one one part of it and the term abolition and wh how that's a complete dismantling of the prison industrial complex and could you talk about that word and the meaning and, and how that would sure um, I mean abolition really is a term that um, is you know gratefully taken from the abolitionist movement against slavery and it's a really similar situation I mean slavery was used to control black people in America and really created to divide um, working in poor people um, in order to give some benefits of white skin and others um, you know um, in enslavement and this is something that continues today except the new form is prisons and um, so when we talk about abolition we're taking that that same name that the abolitionist movement of Frederick Douglass of um, you know folks used 
um, you know, 100 years ago and saying the same thing is happening now. And just like they argued for ab abolishing slavery, they didn't argue for more, you know, less hours for slaves. They argued we need to get rid of this whole system. And we're saying the same thing, that really we need to abolish um, prisons as a form of social control and the prison industrial complex. And thinking, really the, the thinking that somehow we can stop harm in communities by um, locking away the people who are um, most clearly um, or implicated in causing that harm. We say we need to actually address how people's actions can harm a community and find a way that we can all work together to solve that. Mm -hmm. And there's some really good examples of people doing that on local levels throughout the country, either in schools where you have kind of a more, um, you know, peer mediation that happens within schools as opposed to... Is that the to, project you're working on? Yeah, um, I also, I work with um, Education Non-Incarceration, um, which is a grassroots organization really started out of critical resistance in a lot of ways and a lot of other um, organizing within teachers, students, and parents really coming together to say, you know, right now, so many children are being pushed out of school um, due to really underfunding of schools, due to really repressive um, policies within the school system. So you have children who, you know, may have um, acted up or s spoken back to a teacher who, instead of finding a way to actually um, incorporate them, their education is taken away. They're expelled or they're um, restricted from attending school anymore. And this is something where we don't think that you can teach children by taking away their education. That doesn't really seem to help um, in terms of creating a society of educated people who can make good decisions about how we want our society to operate long term. And this is something that's also happening institutionally. So we have, um, you know, over the past, since 1985, past 20 years pretty much, um, half of the money um, that's been spent on um, higher education is only higher education is half as much as prison spending on a nationwide level. So we have a huge amount of money going into prisons and we have a very small amount of money going into education. And this is something that's happening across the country. And so really responding to that from a perspective of teachers and students especially. Great. And we're going to talk more about it, especially this whole racial injustice and inequity and just racism within this um, complex and uh, how, what's happening, what are the accomplishments and successes that we've had along the way that you've had in your organizing work to see, you know, the, the curtailing and not the growth of this, um, you know, machine of imprisonment. So when we come back, we're going to talk about that. This is Rochester Indie TV, and you can catch us on Mondays at 6.30 on Channel 15 in the city, as well as Thursdays at 8.30 on Channel 15. And we are um, out in Greece suburbs, and we're online at rochesterindymedia.org. Stay tuned, Indie TV. Oh, hi. I'm Steve Heiss. I'm the producer and editor of the Indie Media Newsreel, which is the program you're watching right now. Or, well, I mean... Very, very important message, so listen very carefully. Not now, now, because now, now, I'm recording this, and then I have to edit it, and, but, but I mean, for your now, right now, as you're watching this, it's now. Um, well, anyway, um... Newsreel is a monthly program that's been in production for about seven years. Every month, activist video producers from around the country, around the world even, send in video segments about events in their communities. Events where people are standing up for what they believe in and trying to make a difference in the world. However, we have a problem. Lately, for whatever reason, when I sit down toward the end of the month to work on putting together the next month's program, I look at the pile of submissions sent to me and, well, that pile's been pretty empty. For some reason, people just aren't sending very much in. And I'm not sure why, but I need contributions to make the show happen. I can't just make it out of thin air. I need other people's documentaries. Little documentaries. Two minutes, five minutes, ten minutes about things going on around them in their communities. So if you're watching this and you like this program, maybe you can help. Maybe you make videos or know someone who does. Someone who's involved with a local struggle and wants to document that struggle. Or maybe someone who's already making 
short little documentaries and wants more opportunities to get the word out about what they're doing. There's more details about this project at newsreel.indymedia.org. Help spread the word. Thanks for your help and thanks for watching. Bye. Hi, Rochester Indie TV, and today we're talking about the um, prison abolition movement. D this mantling of the prison industrial complex, but yet finding alternatives and how we can work in the process along the way to achieve that. And to do that is Helly and Jonathan from Oakland, California, who are involved with these two groups, Critical Resistance and Education, Not Incarceration. And um, we were talking about that right during the break about it's not just about dismantling but it's about building some other alternatives because people say well some people really need to be there what about these extreme cases I mean we know there's excessive um, jail and prison sentences for really small things like uh, marijuana and other violations or criminal charges that become very excessive but what about the the dangerous things you know and that kind of what's your response and how will we deal with that and what would it look like again I think it's important to um to make note that it's about one percent of the prison population that falls into that um, you know uh, category of like extreme you know cases or like violent criminals right most of the people who are inside are um, you know are there for nonviolent um, uh, you know actions that they they you know that they did take um, but and I think uh, you know those cases can be um, classified as like health problems like mental problems often and um, and if if people are harming other people um, violently I think we need to ask why why is that um, and how can who who actually cares about this person who is invested in their lives and how can they you know be supported in holding this person accountable um, not just caging them so that they can harm and um, hurt more people inside and then you know maybe they're released to just kind of repeat the same kind of behavior um, and asking that question feeling more invested in people not just wanting to throw them away you know we live in this disposable society and so it's like people who are labeled as criminals can now suddenly be just like tossed aside and you know held in these like contained areas but it's just like that kind of behavior does not go away and most of these crimes crimes are um, people people act in these ways often because they have they see no other choices right because like poverty I think plays a lot into um, you know people stealing from one another or like causing harm to you know other people's property it's a lot of it is because of poverty it's because of health issues too so asking the question why and um, and focusing on like really supporting people and, and, and their communities and creating safety at a community level not just throwing people away how are you doing that how are you working with uh, maybe families of you know that have family members or friends incarcerated and want to get involved what are some of the things you're doing and the work you do with other groups could you talk about that yeah um, critical resistance works a lot in coalition with groups that do provide direct support to families and um, people who are on the inside and their children on the outside are um, um, uh, we also do prisoner mail, um, so um, trying to stay as much connected to people who are locked up and let them know that there are resources and support systems outside of jail. Um, um, and I think our strongest point, our strongest work is done in coalition with other organizations that are offering direct support. Um, but Critical Resistance nationally, I think, is um, trying to do a lot more like paradigm shifting work to really question um, the validity of the of prisons and um, the prison industrial complex and to really uh, help to unify all these different groups that are working separately as um, a, a unified movement. Right? And what kind of accomplishments have you seen? Is there something tangible? like really tangible happening like some prevention of a you know prison going up or limiting number or, you know making sure there's more uh, better conditions even for what's there or something like something mm -hmm. concrete at the time in this immediate because it's going to be to get to the end result might take a lot of little steps along the way so have you seen some of those right I mean I think a lot of um, that work that we're doing in California is to stop the prison expansion right now 
um, that's happening right now. It's like 50,000 beds are being added to um, the already, you know, colossal like uh, um, system of prisons that we have in California. So trying to fight the expansion. Um, uh, do you want to talk a little bit about education and the things? Or? Yeah, we're the, sure. Um, with education and incarceration, one of the main um, successes has been around just um, making sure that children aren't pushed out of school for um, dis for small infractions or for things. So going to different um, you know hearings and making sure that there are other alternatives provided so um, kids can get a full education and aren't ending up um, um, pushed out into the prison system. So there's been a number of cases where we've been able to actually um, intervene and have children um, provided more services or um, be provided a special learning environment if that's necessary, as opposed to having them pushed out into the streets. There's also a lot of work to be done around changing discipline models. So there's some big success in um, LA around really getting um, it's called um, positive behavior support is kind of the, the catch word. But um, really the idea is like creating a respectful classroom is a lot better around providing discipline than just like pu uh, pu penalizing students having punitive discipline after the fact. So it's much better to start the year off with being like, so how do we treat one another? How do we want to have these community norms in our classroom when we're here together to learn? Um, instead of saying, okay, you did something bad, get out of class. Um, and, and there's a lot of work that's been done. There's been books written, there's been, you know, and a lot of these policies are being implemented in school systems throughout the country where there is a lot of ability on a school board level or something to really come in and, and, and say, you know, put out an um, expectation for the whole school system that we want to have this as a, as a basic um, and train teachers in it and really change the way we think about how we're treating students um, and teaching the modeling respect from you know early on. And when we come back, we're going to talk about what we can do here and a group that might want to start up here and some of the ways to get involved and get connected and also about the Critical Resistance Conference coming up in Oakland, California, September 26th through the 28th. And hopefully some of us in Rochester can get out there. So stay tuned. You're watching Rochester Indie TV. And check us out online, rochesterindymedia.org. And a big shout out to the crew. People just got together to do these two shows at last minute and Rochester Indie Media rocks. There's awesome people here get involved find us stay tuned against the war, we also stand behind those who resist it. More and more U.S. service members are actively refusing to participate in the illegal, immoral invasion and occupation of Iraq. No more. We have a different path to take, and it doesn't matter what they do to us. It doesn't matter if they, if they take away our, um, our honorable discharge, if they put us in prison. Call it peace or call it treason, call it love or call it reason, but I ain't marching anymore. Iraq Vets Against the War is a group of veterans that have served since 9-11 uh, in the war on terror. And uh, we stand for three things. Uh, immediate withdrawal of all U.S. occupying forces from Iraq. Uh, reparations for the Iraqi people. And uh, full benefits for all veterans. And the reason I have the flag upside down on my shoulder is because it's a symbol of distress because I am very distressed. My friends are being stop lost and sent back to Iraq without their consent. Uh, the myth of the volunteer army is very distressing to me because it's not a volunteer army. Uh, we've been enslaving soldiers for six years now under the pretext of a national emergency, which is lights on in here? If you need light to access this building, 
You can have your doctor certify your disability, then ask for special accommodation. Equal access is a right, not a privilege. I'm John Church. I'm Sarah Green. I'm Deborah Peterson. And I'm Donna Lawrence. Ow! Oof! Rochester Indy Media. I'm Dawn the Barefoot Host, but people know that. And we're talking today about abolition and recreating alternatives to the prison industrial complex and just the whole way we think about crime and punishment and um, supporting our community members. So let's start with um, this conference coming up, the mm. Critical Resistance. It's been 10 years now of Critical Resistance. And there's also, we have want to talk about the paper too, The Abolitionist. Mm -hmm. But uh, let's start with the conference. Um, what's that going to be like? What can we expect? We're expecting at least 3,000 people to come to Oakland September 26th through the 28th. We're doing a lot of work to um, ensure that this is not just like this focal point, that it's a project that um, means having a lot of lead-up events, good discussions before the conference, and doing a lot of follow-up work so that this will just build on the work that is already happening nationwide so that it can actually um, serve to strengthen our movement. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, our community organizers are coming, um, people who are the real experts on this, um, on, on you know, the struggle to abolish the prison industrial uh, complex are coming and these are people who, you know, were recently locked up and we're trying to make it so that people who are locked up are also a part of the discussion um, by reaching out to people beforehand and, and also, um, you know, via telephone connections, um, trying to incorporate um, those voices coming right out of the uh, prisons um, into the, the um, content of the conference. Do you get a lot of involvement in this, as this group in general, like a high percentage of people who've been incarcerated or through the legal system um, getting involved and in doing this work? Um, not enough. We need to do more work to make sure that that is happening. Um, and I think, uh, you know, in the Bay Area, we work with an organization called All of Us or None, which is um, led and um, formed. It came out of people who, you know, had been recently released and um, wanting to um, organize around their rights as people because a lot of your rights are taken away once you are charged with a felony. You can't vote. You can't um, qualify for welfare and social security needs um, or social welfare needs. Um, so um, working more directly with um, that organization in the Bay Area and doing similar work nationally. Um, yeah, so there's going to be 3,000 people. There's a travel fund, so people who want to come out to Oakland um, can apply to that and have their um, travel expenses covered. And we are prioritizing people who are uh, formerly incarcerated and um, people who are already doing this type of work to come out. It's not going to be this like heady academic conference of people, um, although you definitely want more and more people to learn about um, the struggle against the prison industrial complex. Um, but uh, but people who are already doing this type of work to come out and um, share their experience. And it's, it's a, a way that we can reflect on the work that we've done the last 10 years, and not just we as in critical resistance, but that this movement has done, um, and to talk about what we can do to strengthen uh, this work um, and where we want to be in the next 10 years. Mm -hmm. And so. with the you know the intensive racism that happens within the system and the might majority uh, disproportionate numbers of people of color being incarcerated, and I can't help but with your shirt free the NJ <coughs> excuse me free the NJ four, which yeah. is something I just learned about recently. Although this happened mm -hmm. now almost uh, two, years ago, two years ago, and it really didn't get any press. Do you want to just talk about that? Make some connections between the um, high numbers of incarceration and what what those numbers look like just to give people an idea of people of color and what happened with the New Jersey 4. I know it's a big story but if you can just set it up for us and people right. can research it, find information because it was totally shut out of all mm -hmm. the corporate media and anything mainstream. Right. So it started in August 2006. Um, uh, seven young African-American lesbians uh, from New Jersey traveled to the West Village for a night out in the city and um, they were uh, assaulted um, by this man, verbally assaulted. Uh, he was yelling out um, 
sexual and homophobic, or sexist and homophobic comments. And um, so they defended themselves and um, this broke out into a fight and uh, cops were called. They came on the scene and um, arrested the seven women. Um, and uh, three of them accepted plea bargains, um, and the other four are now facing three and a half to 11 years in prison for, you know, defending themselves. And they were called like the roving pack of like, I mean, just like all of the way the yeah. media characterized it and just, you know, right. just dism dismissed them as the dangerous, mm -hmm. you know. And it is about homophobia, it's about racism, it's about sexism, mm -hmm. and, um, and how really again the you know the system of policing caging people only serves to further oppress people who are already um, um, you know disproportionately uh, or people who are already oppressed mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and done wrong by the system mm -hmm. So. We only have about mm -hmm. a minute. Do so any last comments about this? You really want to know to let people know? And I check would check them like out on MySpace. <laughs> check, yeah, um, definitely. And if you're it's organizing definitely. against the PIC, come to CR10 in September, please. Yeah. Okay. Um, and also, just how critical, how huge this issue is. I mean, one out of every hundred people in the U.S. is incarcerated. There's over three million people who are in some part of the criminal justice system, whether that's ICE or you know, um, actually on parole. And it's um, higher than any other country in the world. So we talk about other countries being dictatorships or having bad policies and really the US is the one that has the highest rates of incarceration it also has the highest rates um, of just the longest prison sentences in general so we really need to work against that as a whole mm -hmm. and remember how this is impacting people um, especially along the color line so people of color um, Native American people too here in Rochester um, you know this was Iroquois um, you know indigenous land and there weren't prisons here when those people lived here and can, those people continue to live here we can learn from that experience and really learn about how um, those people um, have alternatives you know indigenous people have not created prisons on a, on a large scale before mm -hmm. And if we could connect that to the direct action and the abolition, abolitionist movement, if we could make our own tunnels and start getting people out, we would. We'll have to figure out, you know, how to how to get our own underground t uh, tunnels, metaphorically and uh, literally. But uh, and I would also encourage people to see what kind of organizing is happening in Rochester and really plug into it, support. And it. we're going to get organized. We are already organizing. We have a conference coming up: zero tolerance on poverty in Rochester, October 16th through the 18th. And stay tuned to get involved and we'll see you next time.